Hello, welcome to today's lesson where we are looking at uh, a geometric mean. Remember, this channel is here to provide mathematics to people that are writing their grade 12 exams. Examination Council of Zambia. Okay, so this is a continuation of uh, the topic sequence and series. And uh, this is our seventh topic. Uh, this is our seventh uh, lesson in this topic. Okay, so we are looking at, uh, so what is a geometric mean? What is a geometric mean? We are saying it is the middle term of the three consecutive terms in a GP. We've given an example. If these were the three consecutive terms, then this middle one, which is B, it is going to be your, it is going to be your geometric mean. So this process, this process here, it is trying to, to explain how we arrive at this formula. You have good... Please take note. I'm telling you, these things, you can read them from a lot of books. As for me, when I was preparing this lesson, I looked at a grade 11 progress textbook, as well as the additional mathematics, pure and applied. I've forgotten the name of the author, but it's a common book. So you can also look at some of those books. Okay. So what we are saying, you have got A, B, and C. Okay, and if we are looking at a GP, you know that how do we find a common difference? We were saying we are looking at the second term divided by the first term, which should be equal to the third term divided by the second term. So if you want to solve for B here, this and that it will be B squared is equals to AC. And B, you take the root, which is plus or minus AC. That is where it's coming from. And this is the formula that we use to find the geometric mean. This is the formula that we use to find the geometric mean. So let's look at what we are supposed to do in this case. Uh, considering, I mean, with regard to the examples that we are given. Find two possible values. Two possible values. Why? One will be negative, the other one will be positive. Because a root will always give two possible values. A positive and a minus. Okay? So here... We are saying find two possible values for the geometric mean of what? 5 and, so we are saying we have got 5, we have got our B, which is our geometric mean, and then, so what is our B? B is equals to the positive or of the product of this one, which is A multiplied by, this is a multiplication here. So we need to multiply this. 5 multiplied by 20. What do we get? We get 100. 100 is what we are going to get to, 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 to have here. I hope you understand where it has come from. Or maybe, yes, it's as simple as, uh, maybe you would want it as uh, 5 multiplied by 20. Then we bring it down here as 100 plus or minus which is going to be plus or minus 10. So those two values that we are referring to of the geometric mean is negative 10 or positive 10. These are the two possible values that we are looking at for the first one. All right? These are the two values that we are. So please take note of that. Take note of that. Take note of that. Take note of that. Okay. I'm trying to create space for this question. Okay. So what are we supposed to do now here? The question is asking, say, form a GP that has two geometric means between... Oh between 243 and 9 from a GP where we should have 243 comma maybe this should be something like that those geometric means that we are talking about it's x and y okay so what are we supposed to do in this case I think that is the point that we need to do so in this case we just have to go back to the nth term formula 
which formula am I talking about? This one for the GP. Okay, so that we say um, one, two, three, four. So we know what the fourth term is. It is negative nine. The fourth term is what? The fourth term is negative nine. The fourth term is negative nine. So our A, we know it. Please pay attention. We know what our A is. And we know what our fourth term is. So if I put, I say 2, 4, 3. This is our first term. Remember, I'm coming from this formula. Then the common ratio, we don't know what it is. So we write this. We need to find the common ratio. Then what? 1, 2, 3, 4. What is our fourth term? Which is going to be 4 minus 1. Our fourth term is negative 9. Our fourth term is negative 9. So now, you know that this is going to give us what? 2, um, two, two 4, 3, like this. Then we have negative 9. In this case, we have to find the common ratio just. That is our interest. When we find the common ratio, then we begin to multiply. To find those uh, means so this we have continued to get almost the same thing so this gives us what uh, four three okay let's see if we can simplify this one can we simplify this one nine into we're going to have nine into nine negative one 9 into 24, 9 into 24, we are getting, what are we getting? 9 into 24, we are getting 2, remainder, 6. Then in 9 into 63, we get 7. Okay? After that, so we have this case now. Okay? Are we there? So now, this is what we are getting. As in, then we proceed to find the actual value of R now. We take the cube root this side. Of, okay? And this is going to be a minus 1 over 3. This is what is going to be our R. When you multiply this one three times, it will take us back to this one. So this is the value of our R, which is the common ratio. It is the same thing that we did even when we were looking at the AP, arithmetic mean, if you remember. We used the formula for the nth term for that particular uh, progression. So after we have found this one now, we are supposed to multiply this one by this one to get this. We need to multiply negative 1 over 3 by... So to be, that is what the, the process is now. To find it, those two arithmetic means which are x and y. So I'm going to say multiplied by, which is as good as we are saying negative over 3. What do we get? What do we get? We have negative we have 8 there, then 1. So, this, which is one of them, is going to be negative 8 to 1. X to one of them. Then now to get the next one, which is Y. We multiply this 8 to 1 again by our common ratio, which is negative 1 over 3. So, I'm going to say negative 81 multiplied by negative 1 over 3. So negative and negative, we are going to get what? We are going to get positive 81 over 3. 3 into 8, we all know that it is 2. 3 into 21, 7. So here we have 27. So the arithmetic mean that this question told us to insert 
between these two uh, 80, negative 81 and 27 so then we have 2 4 3 negative 81 27 and negative this is the process that you are required to carry out in order to deal with the arithmetic means practice is required for you and i do encourage you to make sure that you practice these things as many times as possible look for more questions that we may not have tackled here we are teaching you the principles the concepts okay that will assist you to manipulate any other strange question all right so you make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that each and every lesson that is uploaded you are there to watch it so that by the time the exam comes for gce july august for the full time november october somewhere there you are prepared to take it up without challenges for colleagues like teachers those of you that may be watching please you give us a comment on how best we can present these things uh, it's it's normal i i i don't have an editor so it's, i'm prone to errors here okay otherwise as per our culture i have the questions on a piece of paper that you are supposed to do an exercise we have made we have made this a classroom setup where every after lesson you have an exercise to take so as you can see we have question one two and three four the last four questions even this one that talks about finding the three geometric means that is that okay that is what is expected of us to do Thank you so much for watching and supporting us. Right.